So if there aren't any questions about um, the most recent homework assignment, we can go on to this week's uh, reading, which was about the, the 3XX field. Oh, I do have a question. Or Rachel saying good morning. Well, good morning to you too, Rachel. And so if there aren't any additional questions or comments, uh, we can go ahead and I'll pull up the reading for this week. Oh, I should show my screen. Um, there we go. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this week we're talking about the three XX fields or how you describe the item you have in hand. And before I get started in, in going through the reading, were there any questions? So there doesn't seem to be any questions right now. As I said, the three XX fields are how we describe the items we have. And like the 264, the three XX have seen a lot of changes because of RDA. Uh, previously, we used abbreviations and now we're not using a lot of abbreviations. We're still using CM for centimeter, but that's because that's not an abbreviation. That's a symbol. Uh, we also saw the introduction of three new fields, the 33X, the 337, and the 338. And I think in your homework for this week, you'll be asked to go through and um, assign um, 336, 337, and 338 uh, terms to those, op to, sorry, in those, um, to those books or CDs or DVDs. And I see we have a question here from Rachel. On page four example at the bottom, do you have to write the time out or can you use 1175? Let me see, page four. Um, you you do need to do um, 11 hours and 45 minutes. And you, you don't necessarily need to spell out hours and minutes, even though one of the things about RDA is we don't have abbreviations. Uh, we still do have some abbreviations. Uh, you can use H for hours and M-I-N for minutes. I, I choose to spell it out. Uh, just because I'm kind of funny that way. <laughs> but yeah, you, you do have to do 11, 11 H comma 45 M I N. Does that answer your question, Rachel? Even if it is 1175 on the item, I believe so. That is, um, That's another inconsistency in RDA is even though we say transcribe what's on the item, we're also saying, yeah, but we want you to do it this way. RDA is really funny that way, even though it's supposed to make cataloging more simple, um, especially copy cataloging. I think in some ways it's made it more complicated, but that's just my opinion. Uh, I know AACR2 had its share of inconsistencies, uh, but so does RDA. Okay. And so let's go through the 300 field first. Go back to the beginning here. And so... Like I'm saying, 
your your source of information is the item. So for when you're describing an item, most of what you need to know should be right there. You shouldn't need to go and do um, like additional research like we do sometimes if we're trying to find a publisher or a distributor or where those people are, are based at. And in some ways, I feel like this can be the most straightforward field in MARC, and in some ways, it can get kind of complicated. Uh, you can see that I've, I've gone through kind of several scenarios here that you might see or um, kind of easy solutions to those kind of trickier items that you may come across. Uh, like, for example, with page numbers, if you've got something that has no paging whatsoever, you know, the really easy way is to say one volume unpaged, or if you have something that's got a lot of different um, pagings, and, and a friend of mine told me this, rather than trying to count things and figure it out, just to go one volume with multiple pagings in parentheses. And one of the bigger changes, uh, you can see in the subfield A here with the 300 where we um, describe, and I'll get to your question in a moment, Mary, um, where we describe kind of the item we have there, like uh, if it's a, how many pages or how many CDs or it's a DVD. You know, one of the bigger changes is that RDA, before we could kind of use whatever we wanted there, RDA does set out a list of terms that um, we should be using. There's also a provision for uh, you can use your own term if it's common knowledge. Uh, like instead of saying video disc, you could do DVD. And Mary, I see we have a question. Most picture books are 32 pages long. If they are unpaginated, is it wrong to indicate 32 pages? That's a really good question, Mary. And what you can do is, and I th think, did I do this? No, I didn't include this in my examples. What you can do is do that subfield A and then do 32 and put that in brackets because even though you know it has 32 pages and you've counted and it has 32 pages because they're not actually numbered, um, it's considered outside information. And so you would put 32 in brackets and then spell out pages. Does that answer your question? Okay, good, good. Instead of one volume, and that's from Catherine, you can do one volume if you want. And like I said, um, do, oops, sorry about that. I meant to shut my email down. Let me, um, you can, that is an option that you can do. It, it really is up to you. RDA gives you a lot of flexibility to do what a, we call local practices. You know, if, if your library has been doing something, uh, has a policy about, you know, if it's one volume and it's unpaged, you don't know the page numbers rather than going through and counting you can do the one volume with unpaged in parentheses, or if you do know it's 32 pages or you've counted, you can also do 32 pages with the 32 in brackets. Both practices are acceptable, okay? And does that answer your question, Catherine? Okay, good, good. So you can see in going through, um, you know, some of the examples here, you know, the correct term, like for the, um, and I see you guys have a lot of questions today. That's actually really good. <laughs> This is from Diane. If I'm cataloging a manuscript rather than a book, it's a notebook of collected materials, can I still use the one volume unpaged? I would assume you can. 
I don't do a lot of manuscripts and we can actually go into RDA and take a look. Um, for those of you who don't have a subscription to the RDA toolkit, and you don't need to, uh, there are um, other ways of kind of accessing the rules. This can be, at first, it's kind of a little tricky to get into, and um, we won't really go into that today. But I did kind of want to walk you guys through this and show you a little bit how this works. So, so this is a really good time to do this. So you can see where I've gone through to the section on carriers. And I should say, before I get too far, um, the RDA toolkit, unlike the AACR2 binders, are the, the AACR2 binders were organized by material type. So you had a section on books and a section on like audio recordings and a section on video recordings. And because we've kind of moved away from that in technology, we have a lot of crossover now where we have eBooks and we have websites and um, you know we're putting unpublished materials online. The, the creators of RDA decided to kind of go where they lump they lumped all the different resources type resource types into together. So uh, if you're looking in the section on like dimensions here or extent, um, you're going to see everything there, like how to do books and how to do which they call text actually. And so let's take a look here. Um, let's see. Um, and Diane, what you could always do is, um, I'm assuming by notebook, you, you maybe mean like a binder, like they're things that just haven't been bound together. Um, what you could always do too is say something like, um, yes, it's a binder, yeah. It's like one volume, I think it's unbound materials. You can always do that too. Um, let's see here. Pages, complicated. And you can see we really go into a lot of detail here about pages and whether it's a leaf or a page or so we're just going to assume because, OK, here, well, we have updating loose leaves, which is not the same. You could even say uh, one volume loose leaf and unpaged or something like that. So we're going to get out of here now and go back to um, what I was talking about before, which is for like a CD, when you're going through like that A, you know, the official term is sound discs, but if you really wanted to, you could use like, you could say 10 CDs there. And then as Rachel was asking earlier, you know, you do put that, um, the length of it here in parentheses, although if you, if you can't, excuse me, if it's not stated on the item, okay. I'm really sorry about that. Let me go ahead and get a rid get rid of my email here. Um, okay, go away email. It's gone now. We have an unauthorized or an unrecognized uh, mobile device that keeps trying to get into our Wi-Fi network and and our IT people you know want to know who it is and then you know how IT people are. They're great. I love our IT people, but sometimes you're just like okay whatever and so as I was saying with the um, if it's not readily accept like attainable like how long like a DVD or a CD is uh, you can you can leave that part off and okay Rachel has a question would I need a C for cassettes if yes inches Sorry, didn't mean to send that yet. Okay. Um, 
I can answer that question now, or we can get to it in just a minute. Cassettes are a little different. And so let me go through, okay, let me go through the B first, and then I will answer your question, Rachel. And um, so the B, the subfield B is kind of where we put other information about the item. Um, if it's a book, does it have illustrations? Uh, are there maps? Are there photographs? If it's in color, if it's a DVD, is it is there sound? Is there color? And you will see a lot of variation in these fields. Uh, some people may just say illustrations and not say maps or go into a little a lot of detail there. Uh, in terms of like the DVD, you may see things like someone might say stereo or Dolby. And, 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 it's, and it's okay to be very general or very broad. And I do want to point out and that I think it was Mary Austin last week who asked with the 264, if like you didn't have a publisher or um, a place of publication, could you just leave out that field? And that answer was no, you, you still have to have the field there, uh, even if you don't have the information. And this is a case where, this is another RDA in, inconsistency. If you don't have like any illustrations for a book, you can go ahead and skip that B. And I think we'll have some examples at towards the end that show us that. And so that brings us up to that subfield C, the dimensions, which is what Rachel was asking for with cassettes. And let's go ahead and, oh, while I'm thinking about it and I seen it, and I'm sorry, I'm really scattered today. Uh, my, my allergies have been really bothering me and I think it's because I'm not used to Nebraska plants and my body just does not know what to do anyway. So I've kind of got that foggy taking meds and sinuses. So um, sorry about that. Um, you can see I have an example here where we don't have uh, the subfield B. And for our punctuation, we've just used um, a semicolon here to separate the A and the C. And so to answer Rachel's question about cassettes, what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to um, OCLC and to their bibliographic formats and standards page. And let's go to the 300 here. And let's, when I'm not really sure how to deal with something, this is where I will go to, to kind of take a look and see what the answers are. Like if there's an example, I guess answer isn't the right word, to see if there's an example here. And let's scroll through here and see. And with a lot of these, like in the C, like I said, that's kind of the physical dimension of the item, so like for a DVD, it's how many inches it is across. For a book, it's how tall is it. And um, so we have seven film cassettes here. And I'm assuming you're maybe talking about like audio cassettes, like tapes. Yes, okay. Um, here they have Super 8mm, which is the size of the film. And you can see down here, they have 16 millimeter. Uh, again, that's how uh, across the, um, the width of the film itself. Let's keep looking here. Um, let's see here for sound recordings. Okay. Uh, we have an audio tape reel, but again, that's not quite what you're looking for to audio discs. Um, so right 
Now, I'm not seeing anything here that tells us how to deal with an audio cassette. And just to kind of move along, because we have a lot to cover today, uh, Rachel, what I can do is if you don't have access, oh, audio cassette was three up from the one you highlighted. Can you leave that field out? Um, I don't think I've ever seen that subfield. <laughs> That's okay, Rachel. I knew what you were talking about. Um, I don't think I have ever seen a record without um, a subfield C. I think you do have to have that subfield C there. The tricky part is just trying to figure out what goes in there. And if you don't have, and, and I'll say this for anyone, if you don't have a subscription to RDA Toolkit, it can be a little pricey, and you're not sure about something, uh, the rule, then, you know, go ahead and email me, and I can always go check the rule and let you know. I'll, um, is it the one that I'm highlighting right now that you're seeing? One audio cassette? Yes. Yeah, so it's kind of giving you an idea here. It looks like it's got the physical like the overall container and then how wide that tape is. And I will go ahead and check after class and just see what um, what that is for sure and just email you and let you know. But you can see where we have like the, the A here is it's telling us what type it is and how long it is. And you can see where they did abbreviate minutes and that's okay. And then there's no B because they chose not to. You could do a B and say sound, but it probably goes without saying. Or wouldn't it be analog? That's correct. I don't know a lot about digital formats or CDs or tapes and sound stuff, so I always am kind of guessing. And if you don't know for certain, you can always go ahead and omit that. And then, and they maybe, they probably didn't know that. And so then they went ahead and did their C, which is your dimension. And, and that's, it's always going to be kind of that pattern, um, regardless of the format, whether it's a book or a DVD or a CD or something a little more exotic. You'll have your format, kind of its features, and then how big is it? So if we don't have any more questions, and it's okay if we do, um, let's go ahead to kind of the next part here. Uh, you may see, you'll see this a lot um, if you have like books with CDs or um, kits or a lot of educational materials where you have extra materials. And you can describe those by using a subfield E, and you can, again, keep that kind of as simple or as complicated as you want. Um, you can see here from the one of the examples that um, we have a book plus a computer disk. And then they went ahead and, and said it has sound, it has color, and here's how big it is. And you don't have to go through and do like the mark coding with the delimiters and the, the subfields, you just put that in parentheses. And you you could just go ahead and do one computer disk. You don't need to do like what its features are because it's not the main part. Um, it sounds like, it looks like the book is probably the main part. And that brings us down to the three, the new fields, the 336, the 337, and the 338 fields. And this these were introduced uh, because one, we did away with the GMD, that subfield H that we see in older AACR2 records in the 245 field, and replaced it with these three fields because part of RDA, as I said last week, is we're trying to, to catalog each element of an item and, and be very precise. Uh, where we used to kind of lump things together before, now we're trying, excuse me, we're trying to, to break everything out. And so we have, and these were ones I kind of struggled with at first. It, it took me a while to get used to them. And, and they weren't ones I really liked at first. I, I don't know. Um, but I kind of have decided I like them. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and part of it is because if you are working with something that has a lot of parts to it, that has a kit that has CDs and DVDs and an instruction booklet, it is a it is a good way of kind of breaking that all out. And so someone can someone knows what they're getting exactly. It gives you a lot it doesn't necessarily give you more detail than what you'll see in the 300. I think together they give you a bigger picture of what um, you're working with. And so the 336 field is the content type, which refers to kind of the general type of material that is being represented. Uh, it's kind of like the text, like in a book, it's um, how is the information presented? Is it presented in text or with a DVD? It would be video. Um, although video is actually used in media type. Sorry, guys. I know I'm I'm really off today. <laughs> um, media type is that 337 field, and that is kind of how you interact with um, the information. What kind of device do you need to access that information? And, you know, like for a book, you don't need anything. It's we use the term unmediated, which doesn't really mean anything at all. And then carrier type is the physical object. What what's holding that information? And with a book, we use the term volume. Um, with a video like a DVD, we use the term video disc. And I actually had some questions about um, some of the information here. And um, and I realized that how I had written this originally wasn't um, necessarily clear. So I did go ahead and, and um, rework some of the information a little bit on page nine and add a little bit there. So if you have already read through this, uh, you may want to go back and look at it again just to make sure that um, it's clear. And these terms, uh, you know, we can't just use random terms. Uh, we all kind of have to be on the same page. And so you can freely access um, Library of Congress. You can go ahead and pull up their terms that they that are used for these fields. And let's go down through. And so you can see how looking at this, you can get an idea um, once you know the fields well enough, um, what an item is and what you need to access it. You know, for example, um, this is fairly obvious, this combination that uh, it's a book because it's text and you don't need anything. And, you know, it's a volume. And for DVDs, for that 336, that content type, we use two-dimensional moving image. Um, in place of something more simple like movie or video and that you would need its video and and that it's a video disc <coughs> and then you get down to if you have so no punctuation correct there's no punctuation between the fields you just do a space there And so if you've got something like with a book with an accompanying CD, you would do, you can do multiple 336, 337, 338, um, one for each component to describe that item. And they can be described, and these can be organized differently. For example, I like to do my, my 336s together, my 337s together, my 338s together. But some people, um, want to, you know, you may, may want to, um, do each, each item in order, like the 336, 337, 338, and then repeat the 336, 337, 338. So the two, and then some people, um, you know, sometimes you might omit a field, like rather than doing two text, because to me that's a little redundant. And I'll get to your question in a moment, Mary. Um, <laughs> okay. Then you get um, 
you might just have one three three six. And so Mary is asking us, I see a lot of records that don't include the B and two subfields. Are these necessary? Okay, so the B, I don't do the B. The B is just the code, and that's for the computer. And right now, I think, I'm not sure they really serve a purpose. And some people, some librarians do include them because down the road they may. I don't. And so they're not, the B is optional. That two, you do need to include the two because um, we need to know like what vocabulary list that is coming from. Uh, there are, I don't know of any libraries, but I guess there is the option of using your, like your own locally vocab, your own local vocab for that. So in that case, you would want to record the source of that term. But again, I don't know of any library that is. And if we're all, if we're all using um, that list, that RDA content list, it, it does seem a little strange to include it. Does that answer your question? Okay, good. Um, and, and this is also where I added a little bit too. Um, my point is you can see a lot of variation in these fields and, you know, everyone does it a little differently, kind of depending on what their personal preference is or their local practices or what is best for their library. And then um, if you want, you can do a subfield three at the beginning, like if you're working with something that has a lot of components that tells you specifically what um, this line, like this information, this text refers to, to a book. Um, and I, I don't necessarily do that. I, I don't work with a lot of kits right now. I have in the past and I, I did use this a little bit. And these can be, you can use any term you want here. You don't have to use um, terms from a specific list. And so this brings us down to the 490 and the 8XX fields. These are the how we record a series, uh, if an item is part of a series. Uh, and if there aren't any questions about the 3, 3XX fields, uh, we'll move on to this. So it, it doesn't look like there are any questions. And so I, I don't work with a lot of series uh, right now, uh, just the nature of my job and the materials I'm cataloging. But for those of you who work a lot with children's books, uh, you know, series can be are kind of the norm there. It seems like everyone has a series now. And we pull that information from, you know, whether it's a series or not, you can see here, it's pretty obvious it actually says series. And, and that will go into the 490 field here. And then, and I'll walk, we'll walk through how to do this. Um, if you do have a series, what you do need to do is go into the Library of Congress and check to see if there is an authorized heading for, um, that so we'll just do that right now and you just go in and you you just search the authorities and we'll just type that in that was uh, we'll just do ALA series and see what happens and if you want to you can go ahead and decide what kind of authority file you're looking for, if it's a keyword or the name title or title or name or subject. Um, I personally just do begin search and just I see what happens. And so when I searched for ALA series, you can see that it came up uh, with references. So it looks like we got Annual Selected Papers of the ALA, which is not what I was looking for. I was looking for something else. Let's see here. Go down. It was ALA Fundamental Series. So we'll go back and we'll try searching for that. A 
Okay, and you can see where it looks like we have a couple of different options. We've got ALA Fundamentals. We have, we got lucky, ALA Fundamentals series. So we'll click on here and it'll bring us to the record. And so in this case, what we're doing is we're just, we're looking to see what the authorized version, what the official um, term is that we're going to use in our 8XX field. And um, we're going to use, it looks like ALA fundamental series. That's what matches. Um, and a 130, when you see any, like a 130 or a 630 or an 830, that means it's it has to do with a series. And so we'll go ahead and enter that then into, um, we won't enter it into the 490 because the 490 is what actually appears on the item. It will go into our 830 field right here because that's where the authorized form of it is. And even though they are the same, um, you still need that 8XX field because, and it has to do with the way um, Thing, it has to do with computers. It's a computer thing. And that 830 field is searchable. And, and also because it is the authorized form, uh, like in a lot of libraries, this might be hyperlinked. And if you click on it, it'll lead you to other things that are a part of this series. And with that 490, you can't, it's not necessarily hyperlinked and won't, won't perform that same function. And then I have an example here where you can see that what appears on the 490 is not the same as what appears on the 830. And having that 830 there, that just, it makes sure that all those items that are um, part of the same series are brought together, regardless of what's on the item. And I've got a question from Alyssa. What if our local practices conflict with this? At my library, we don't add the word series at the end because the catalog ends up displaying it as series, ALA fundamental series. And my director decided it looked too redundant. Um, I believe that you should follow your local practices. They're there for a reason and depending, and, and, some of those are because of what you're saying, Alyssa, that depending on your ILS and how things are set up, um, it may not always, your ILS may not always play well with the rules. And so you have to do what's, what's best in terms of display options and what's best for your patrons. So even though, um, and I'm assuming you're talking about the 490 here, even though um, the 490 says don't, the 490 says transcribe what you see uh, when it comes to local practices. Those kind of trump. Okay, those do trump what um, what the rules say. Does that answer your question? Okay, good, good. So let's see, and then that brings us down, and you have, you may have noticed this in records that sometimes you have your series. Um, this is part of the Midford books. I've never read these, actually. I've heard they're, they're good. Um, if you go ahead and you look up the Midford years in the authority file, um, the authorized version is a personal name heading. Uh, for example, it has the author, um, and then the title. And honestly, I'm not sure why that happens sometimes. I, I like I said, I don't do a lot with series. Um, it could be because um, sometimes we do things like this because there may be another heading for Midford series that's used um, as a series. And so, we use the author's name as a way of differentiating between those two. And so because it's an author's name um, and those go into the one at the ones, the 100, the 600, the 700 and the 800. And then that brings us down to um, 
Library of Congress is no longer really doing series authority work. They transcribe that series statement into a 490, but they're not they're not looking to see if there's an authorized form. And um, you can go ahead and look and see if there is an authorized form and use that. And if there is no authorized form, you can leave the 490 um, as it is. You don't need to add an 830 then. And um, so that kind of brings us to the end of today's reading. Uh, are there any other questions before we I, I bring up the assignment for this week and we talk about the assignment a little bit? Why was the left off the series name in the 490 field of the example? Let's take a look, Mary, and see. It could just be a typo on my part. Um. Which example are you talking about? The last one, okay, the Midford. Um, you know, that could just be a typo on my part. I suspect that's probably what it is. You got a sharp pair of eyes there, Mary, thanks. I will go ahead and correct that. Um, and then the authorized version, it did leave it off. And that might just be um, a decision that was made um, by whomever created that field. Or because the is um, one of those words, I forget what they're called. Um, in the 245, you know, we skip over when we're alphabetizing. It could be that's why it was left off there. And then I, when I was transcribing this and typing this up. So would there be a four in the second indicator? Um, for the 490, um, no, there wouldn't. And we can go ahead and, cause I can never remember all these indicators and whatnot. I always have to go and pull them up in OCLC and look. And no, we don't use the second indicator in the 490. We leave that undefined for whatever reason. And for the 800, for a personal name here, um, it doesn't look like we use that second indicator either. They're both undefined, so we leave them blank. Does that answer your question? Oh, articles. Thank you, Alyssa. Yeah. That is the word I was looking for. I believe they are called articles. So unless there's any more questions, we can, I'll go back and I'll pull up today's assignment. Let's see here. Um, Okay, now Mary's saying, now I think the article should be left out, especially for alphabetizing series. You know, I, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> let's, let's go and look at the 490 and see what it says and look at the examples. Um, you can see where in this example, the Coward Collection, it does have the there. Um, and we've got one down here where it says the new series, but for the authorized, the official version, they did go ahead and leave the off um, for exactly that reason for alphabetizing. Um, Rachel's saying, I couldn't find Midford in the Library of Congress search until I left the off. Okay. So it looks like um, even though Let's pull that back. Even though it's saying the Midford years here, um, that maybe that should be the Midford, that should be Midford there. Um, it's okay if you leave the the off. Um, like I say a lot, there, there's a lot of um, you know personal preference that goes when you're doing a catalog record or when you're copy cataloging, you know, kind of what you like and what you don't like and um, what works for you. But that is a really interesting question there. 
about that 490 because usually it is what um, what is on the item. And this does say the Midford years. Okay, well, I'll have to come back later and look at that a little bit more in detail. So the assignment, um, unless there's more questions. So it doesn't look like there's any more questions. Um, so I'll bring up the assignment. Okay, here it is. And it's really similar to what we've been doing the last couple of weeks where you've got some titles here and we're gonna go ahead and complete um, complete the field for what's there. And so um, your 300 is basically gonna be based on what you're seeing there. And then we will do a 336, 337, and 338 fields for um, these items here, again, um, based on what you're seeing. And we're not going to be doing transcribing any series there, um, which is okay. We'll just be doing concentrating on the three XX fields. So are there any questions about the assignment? And it doesn't look like there's any questions. Uh, the assignment will be um, due um, next Wednesday. It doesn't need to be to me by 8 in the morning. It can be end of the day. Whatever works for you. If you've got any questions, let me know. And I'm always more than happy to answer your questions about the assignment. And... If that's it, I'm gonna go ahead and we can go early today. I will get the slides posted, um, not the slides, excuse me. Um, I'll get today's uh, webinar posted to YouTube and I'll go thr through and transcribe the questions and post those. And so if that's it, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just call it a day and um, next week we're going to be talking about, let's pull that up, we'll be talking about the the five XX fields, which is um, the notes fields. And oh, good, I'm glad to hear that you're not as confused today, Lori. <laughs> That that makes me very happy. So we're gonna, like I said, we'll just go ahead. We'll call it a day, and and you know, if you're confused about anything, um, call me, email me, and we'll work through it. And Rachel, I will check in RDA in the toolkit um, to see what we do with cassettes, and I will hit send you an email shortly. Okay. Awesome. Okay, thanks you guys. Thanks for bearing with me and my my muddled um, sinus issues today. Uh, hopefully next week I, I won't be as muddled. And I'm glad you liked the class. So thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you, Rachel. I will try to feel better. And and I'm really enjoying um, working with you guys. So it's been a lot of fun, and I I'm learning a lot. So you guys ask really good questions, and it forces me to go and learn and look things up and consider things I have never considered before. So thank you. And I'll talk to you guys next week, if not before.